All right, and hello everyone. Welcome to this tutorial on DaVinci Fairlight. Uh, so today we're going to be working with an audio sample of me reading an excerpt from a book. Uh, now, before we begin any audio editing, the first step is always to listen to the raw audio and sort of pick out things that we want to fix. So let's take a listen. Strong theoretical evidence suggests that an episode in the very early universe, perhaps during one of the four splits, endowed the universe with a remarkable asymmetry. Okay, so first things first, uh, background noise. In this audio clip, there, you know, isn't a lot going on in the background, but I can still tell that in the room itself, there's a sort of like echo, right? Um, and then the other kind of notable thing is that a lot of the S's and the syllables of the consonants are really popping out and they're kind of hissing at the mic so um, we're gonna fix all of these so let's go to the right hand side uh, here's the mixer and i'm going to be teaching how to edit in a specific order right the order that's shown right here so effects first dynamics and equalizer now, what do all of these things do? Effects, we're going to be working with the most basic effects, which is the restoration, right? So this is going to be something you're probably going to apply onto any sort of speaking clip. Uh, there's the de dehummer, and noise reduction. We'll get into those a little bit later. Dynamics essentially uh, deals with volume and the compressor specifically uh, tries to level out the natural inflections in our voice so you know when we're talking uh, we'll kind of have these natural rises and falls depending on how we excited that we get or you know certain syllables just have more punch to them so they kind of pop and are louder um, and so what the compressor does is when the audio passes a certain threshold of volume what we call gain in editing or over here if you see db that stands for decibels right these are all kind of words uh, we use to mean volume once the gain passes a certain threshold what the compressor does is it dampens the sound um, and we'll see what that means later EQ controls the volume, but this time with frequencies, and frequencies are measured in hertz, right over here, H Z, right? So um, all of us have different frequencies of voices, uh, and in our audio clips, there'll be different frequencies going on. So when people say boost the bass, right, they really mean to raise the volume of the lower frequencies, and that's what we're going to do with the equalizer. Okay, so let's start off with our effects. The most basic one is noise reduction. Um, and something really neat about Fairlight is it has these options here where you can isolate for the problem area. So if we click on listen to noise only and take a listen. In which particles of matter barely outnumbered particles okay. of antimatter by a billion and one. To so if you notice, it's picking up mostly background noise and a little bit of my voice, right? So what would happen if we adjusted the sensitivity, let's say, to all the way? In which particles of matter now barely... Now it's picking up more of my voice. So we don't want it to pick up too much of my voice because then it's going to kind of like um, hinder on the actual speaking. But we do want it to pick up a little bit more so I think in which particles of matter barely outnumbered particles of antimatter right here is good and then the threshold um, so how this works is you know if I have a really 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 quiet truck in the background right and my voice is much louder than that truck my let's say my voice sits at around negative three decibels then what I want to do is as long as I cut off all of the sound that is below that threshold, let's say we put it at negative four decibels, then the the sound of the truck is going to be cut off, right? So that's kind of how the threshold works. So we can kind of figure out where's our threshold for this background noise. By a billion and one to a billion. That small difference in population would hardly get noticed by anybody. Right about there. 
Now, attack is basically how the, the speed at which we want Da Vinci to act once some noise crosses the threshold that we've given it. So um, a slow attack noticed by anybody amid the constant creation, annihilation, and recreation Makes it of sound quarks kind and anti-quarks, weird and electrons and anti-electrons, so better known as positrons, to be and neutrinos and anti-neutrinos. And anti -neutrinos. Now, the issue the is that out had if, a, if the attack is too fast, then the software is going to act really quickly, right? And sometimes that can produce a choppy effect. So you really got to play around with this one here to see what, or hear what sounds best. Uh, and then the last is the output. So let's get rid of this and just listen to... The odd man out had oodles of opportunities to find somebody to annihilate with, and so did everybody else. But not for much longer. Okay, so dry wet. Now, what does this mean? So on one extreme end of the spectrum, wet makes somebody sound like they are underwater or trapped in a box or in the other room. Listen to what this sounds like. As the cosmos continued to expand and cool, growing larger than the size of our solar system, right. the temperature... Now on the other end of the extreme, dry makes somebody's voice sound crisper but obviously if it's too dry if the mix is too dry then they can kind of sound brittle like their throat is like parched right so let's take a listen it dropped rapidly below a trillion degrees kelvin a millionth of a second has passed so generally you want your mix to be on the dry side but kind of not too dry Right, so right about here. Last since the beginning. This tepid universe was no longer hot enough or dense enough to cook. Okay, that's a good level. All right, let's move on to the de -esser. So this is exactly what it sounds like, right? We're trying to lower the volume of the S's, the sharp S's. Now, the thing is that everybody's voice has a different range of frequencies on which their S's fall under. Why is that? Well, we all have different pitches in our voice, right? So for each individual person, you have to kind of uh, turn this effect on where you isolate the S's and just listen. Where do their S's pop? Which, what, at what frequency? And now, we're going to adjust this nozzle right here and listen. Strong theoretical evidence suggests that an episode in the very early universe, perhaps during one of the four splits, endowed the universe with a remarkable asymmetry, in which particles of matter barely outnumbered particles of antimatter by a billion and one to a billion. That small difference in population would hardly get noticed by anybody amid the constant creation, annihilation. Right, so right around here at this frequency uh, are where I hear the S's the most. So now let's get rid of the listen to S only. And then let's boost the amount at which Da Vinci is suppressing my S's and take a listen. Strong theoretical evidence suggests that an episode in the very early universe, perhaps during one of the four splits, endowed the universe with a remarkable asymmetry, in which particles of matter barely outnumbered particles of antimatter by a billion and one to a billion. That small difference in population would hardly get noticed by anybody amid the constant creation, annihilation, and recreation okay. of quarks and antiquarks, electrons and anti-electrons, better known as pot. Okay, sounds good. So next we're going to move on to the dehummer. So um, when we're speaking, sometimes there are lower level harmonics that go on and they kind of produce a hum and uh, lower quality microphones tend to pick this up. This is kind of what it sounds like. Dowd the universe with a remarkable asymmetry in which particles of matter barely outnumbered particles of antimatter. This is kind of like the vibration, the hum that our voices naturally produce. And Oh, theoretical listen. evidence suggests that an episode in the very early universe, perhaps during one of the four splits, endowed the universe with a remarkable asymmetry. So I'd say about 60 hertz are where my hums are particularly landing, so let's get rid of the isolation effect and boost, or I guess lower the hum. 
Strong theoretical evidence suggests that an episode in the very early universe, perhaps during one of the four splits, endowed the universe with a remarkable asymmetry. Okay. Sounds good. You can always tweak these effects after. So again, with the compressor, um, we're basically trying to put a cap, uh, a threshold on the volume, and this ratio here adjusts how much it clamps down on the volume. So perhaps during one of the four splits, endowed the universe with a remarkable asymmetry in which particles of matter barely outnumbered particles okay. of antimatter by a so billion and one that to a billion. Is, is a good place to stay at. Now, so we know about attack, right? Attack is how quickly the software acts once uh, a, a noise surpasses the threshold. Hold is how long that the software is acting on or in this case, kind of compressing on the sound. And the release is how fast it lets go and uh, goes back to a state of not compressing the sound. So here we want the release to be quick, the attack to be fairly quick, and the hold to be like, you know, right around there. Obviously, this is going to be different for our, each audio file. Just make sure to listen to... Um, how adjusting each of these, um, whether they produce really choppy effects or this kind of like weird rise and fall where you hear like a spike and then it clamps down, right? Um, if you hear, for example, the attack is too slow. Of quarks and antiquarks, electrons and anti-electrons, better known as positrons, and neutrinos and anti-neutrinos. The odd man out had right. oodles so of... Notice if the attack is too slow, right? There's this weird kind of effect where you'll hear the spike in the voice and then it'll go down. So it'll be like, eh -uh, eh -uh, eh -uh. and that's not what we want, right? So there we can see that our attack is not fast enough. The compressor's not working fast enough to lower that volume once it passes the threshold. So if we hear that, we would lower the attack. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So um, I think this is so, this is good so far for like right around there for the compressor. And now if we have, if we're really happy with our ratio, right? But we want the entire thing overall to sound louder without changing any of the ratios, we can go to this bar right here, which is the makeup. Remarkable so. asymmetry in which particles of matter barely outnumbered particles of antimatter by a billion and one to a billion. That small difference okay. in power. So it'll preserve the ratios while raising the volume of the entire thing. And then the last thing, so now let's move on to the equalizer. So once again, this is adjusting pitch and uh, sorry, this is adjusting the volume of different frequencies. Remarkable asymmetry in which particles of matter barely so outnumber that uh, there are both very low frequencies going on and very high frequencies going on. Uh, I recorded this originally in a bathroom, so um, let's turn on band one right here. So I think I'm gonna dampen the lower frequencies. That small difference in population would hardly get noticed by any- And then I'm going to kind of dampen the higher ones as well. Remarkable asymmetry in which particles of matter barely outnumbered particles of antimatter by a billion and one and now to a trick billion. Is that if small I want difference to in boost or dampen a very narrow range of frequencies, what I would do is, so let's say I want to adjust band three, right? But I don't want to kind of boost this entire range of frequencies. What I would adjust is something called the Q factor down here. And if I raise this up, I'm going to basically narrow the scope of frequencies that I'm adjusting, and the slope is going to be a lot steeper. Okay, so, and then if I lower it again, it's gonna flatten out the slope. Okay, so most human voices kind of fall in this this range of frequency, so I'm gonna boost it right around here. Let's take a listen. ...and recreation of quarks and antiquarks, electrons and anti-electrons, better known as positrons, and neutrinos and anti-neutrinos. The odd man out had oodles of opportunities to find somebody to annihilate with, and so did everybody else. But not for much longer. 
as the cosmos can okay so so far um it's sounding pretty good obviously with audio editing there is endless fine tuning uh, but for the purposes of today i hope that this has been a helpful tutorial um, if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out and best of luck thank you